Tonight, in the sacrament of the Eucharist, we put the achievement and success and completion of graduation under the sacred canopy of the story of Christian faith. Graduates in divinity identify with this story. Graduates in counseling are honorary members of it. By the way, the mental health counseling formation lives within this institution of a theological seminary. In our liturgy class this past spring with the divinity students, we had a discussion about the baptism of an infant, whether the priest should hold the baby or let the mother hold her over the font, and whether after the baptism, the baby should be handed back to the mother or given to one of the godparents. The practical question was, what is safest? And what is most likely to keep the child from crying? And the theological question was, what is baptism all about? Theologically, baptism means that the child is initiated into the family of God, bigger than the mother and father, and that this new birth might require some awkward embraces by a stranger, some water in the eyes, and some screaming. <laughs> if you will accept an imperfect analogy, I've been thinking that these events of graduation after the end of classes, starting with the reception for seniors, the outdoor Eucharist in the Mott, the hilarity of last gathering, are something like the ritual of baptism, where we who have lived with you and taught you and advised you and shared meals and had parties with you have to prepare to let you go. And as you pack up your belongings and close your student accounts and return your keys, you begin to realize <laughs> that you won't be spending every night in class together or mornings and evenings in Christ Chapel or live down the street anymore. It's going to be a loss, it's going to hurt, and you begin to let each other go. As I experience this transition ever, every year, I remember my mentor, Martha, Dean Martha Horn, quoting a faculty member at Virginia Seminary who used to say, it's sad to see you go, but it would be tragic if you stayed. <laughs> the loss and the letting go that you undergo tonight is part of a larger story of loss and letting go that's told in the gospel reading tonight. It is one episode in an ongoing transition, a crossing, a passage, a long swim, a deep dive that those who leave share with those of us who remain here to teach and lead and welcome a new class in August. It's the transition of a lifetime, and it's called drinking the cup that Jesus drinks and being baptized with the baptism with which Jesus is baptized. James and John were at their top of their class. They'd been to the mountaintop of the transfiguration, and they figured that their privilege would get them positions in Jesus' new administration. Their colleagues got angry. Everybody started to squabble, and Jesus had to speak to them sternly. You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. It's human 
to try to avoid being hurt. It's even hu human to hurt others. Unintentionally, when you take your power as a counselor or priest for granted and say or do something careless. Or when in order to escape pain yourself, you become a tyrant. Drinking Jesus' cup and being baptized with his baptism means losing and letting go. Letting go of security, of perfection, of freedom from the pain of loving. The people of Israel lose their king, their temple, their land. They sin and are scattered. Jesus is tested, pursued, tortured, and ex executed. And God washes the people breathes life into them, and brings them back to their land. God raises Jesus from the dead, and God brings a whole people back to life. God gives them a role, a job, a task, marching orders. God gives them a way to understand loss and pain and letting go as the paradox of faith. Those friends and loved ones who have died, whom we will name tonight, lived this story. They drank Jesus' cup and were baptized with his baptism. Our honorary degree recipients, Catherine Meeks and Flo McGee, have lived this story. And you here have been formed in this story of losing and finding, being last and being first, dying and get being given new life. Your years here have been years of particular loss, loss of mobility and company, being deprived of touch and proximity in the height of the pandemic, some of us were just talking the other day about the wonderful bicycle tour I took you on at New Student Orientation. I was so excited about it because I thought I'll show them Austin and we won't be close and we won't breathe on each other. And we tried to adapt. And I didn't see many of your faces again until the spring. And I, I got you mix, a little mixed up. But I, I've got you all straight now. These have been years of loss uh, of safety in the constant shooting everywhere at mall, club, spa, school, church, loss of safety. And in the harrowing and ongoing reckoning with race, the loss of life, and the loss of innocence. And after it's a losing, it's also this story, a gaining and a getting. While it's a losing, the gospel proclaims, it's also a saving. It's receiving life from a stone-cold tomb. It's knowing eternal life after death. It's gaining companionship, classmates, friends, those who share belonging in a body, sharing a mission of healing, serving, and giving life. It's receiving joy, and it's being sent. He is not here. Go to Galilee. There you will see him. The people of Israel are not supposed to hang out at ease in Zion, but get to work being a light to the nations. And Jesus' friends are not supposed to stay in church, but head out to the country where there are human beings mentally ill, hungry, thirsty, naked, poor, and there, where there are plenty of tyrants, arrogant and dangerous. It would be tragic if you stayed. <laughs> Tonight, together with your families and friends and faculty and staff, 
Let us give thanks for the friendship, company, joy, and wisdom we have gained, the renewed purpose, and wider insight into the mystery of God. You have changed us for the better. Thank you. And now, you've got water in your eyes, and we hand you over screaming to your godmother. Thanks be to God. Amen.